Hi guys, and welcome back to the Good Vibes Podcast with me, your host, Zach Dobmeyer. All right, guys. So I am here with a special guest today. I have my friend Ray here, who was my neighbor for the longest time, used to babysit me and my brother. And so please welcome to the podcast, Ray. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good after we got all this figured out. It took us forever <laughs> to figure out how to even like record this fucking Zoom. It is now 2.34. We, it took us 35 minutes, honey, but we, we got it. We got there. We did get there. We went through different, we went through Google Meeting, Google Duo, and just different things trying to figure out how to record this damn meeting and mm-hmm. finally got it to work. By using no. a laptop. <laughs> I know it, that was the same. There, it's always random and technology is just, you'd think after 2020, you know, technology would be like up to par and up to speed with where we need it. And it's not. And, you know, you would think, <laughs> but it is what it is. So, yeah. So I have some questions, some just, you know, interesting questions. And then later on in this episode, we will do weird, stupid, funny questions that I found. Totally random. I have no clue. I found it on livecareer.com. So oh, beautiful. <laughs> never heard of it, but we'll see. Um, okay, so first, we're going to talk about the LGBTQ plus community. So... I don't think I've ever really talked about this like on a podcast or anything. And most of the people that listen to this are people that know me. So it's like, why would I talk about it? (laughs) But that's that's very true. (laughs) And on my last podcast, it was an episode with a drag queen. So obviously I'm, I'm gay. Like that's, that's pretty, (laughs) pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you know, that was a long, long journey of figuring that out and things like that. And then once you get to that conclusion and then you are in a city that is full of uh, so-called rednecks. Um, <laughs> yeah. And in high school when you, I literally in high school got bullied for everything but for being gay. Like how interesting yeah. was that? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I got, I, no one knew that I was, uh, I don't even know if I can call it slightly gay because I'm pansexual. I feel like that makes me extra gay, honestly. <laughs> uh, it's like bisexual honestly, on steroids. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> that. It's basically what it is. Like, uh, you know, anywho. Apparently, that wasn't super apparent in high school, uh, which I find really interesting because most of the guys that I dated were, like, a little bit feminine looking. Not that that's a bad thing, period, but, like, I feel like they were a little bit more feminine looking, and I, I mean, like, I kissed the neighbor girl many times. I, you know, we did that when we were kids. Like, I talked about that openly, and you know, when we would, like, change in the locker rooms, I, like, didn't care right. about anything either, and, oh, God, I'll never forget, like, uh, when one of my friends came out as a lesbian, um, everyone in the girls' locker room was just freaking the hell out, and they were like, oh, my God, what if she, like, hits on me or whatever, and I looked at those girls, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's hilarious that you think she would be into you. Oh, exactly. A hundred percent. I felt the exact same way. Like I was out going into my freshman year. So, and being in a grade full of guys and for the, for the most part, you know, we had other kids that I knew were gay in my grade that had left South St. Paul after eighth grade. So at that point I was the only out kid the only gay kid that I knew of within my grade. So for my entire life, it was like just this constant, like I was the only one. So there were things like I never got personally bullied for it, but 
there were like rumors that would start because of me being gay. So I guess you could consider that, you know, part of being bullied for being gay. But, um, you know, in in South St. Paul, it's that's just something. And now it's way more, you know, open about it. But back mm-hmm. back, I don't want to say back in the day, like this was literally three years ago. But yeah, <laughs> like it wasn't that long ago. But, you know, freshman and sophomore year, definitely for sure. We like I didn't really talk about it much. Um, but at the time when I first came out, I thought I like everyone needed to know. So I was, you know, my voice was a lot higher on purpose. Like I purposely made my voice higher. I wore Lady Gaga shirts and drag queen shirts and Ariana shirts and just different things like that because I was like, oh, people need to know I'm gay. Um, I remember this. Yeah. And <laughs> I like, clearly. I let it define me. Like I let being gay mm-hmm. define me instead of just being a part of me, I guess. Yeah, and, that's something that a lot of people don't understand is it's just, it's, it's, it doesn't change who you are. It's just who you are. It's just right. a part of you. You don't have to change how you dress, how you look, anything like that. You do what makes you comfortable, what makes you you. Um, like, for example, when my sister came out as trans, right? She came out yep. to uh, my brother and I, and she, she was like, hey, I'm a girl and you know uh when when that first was going on um my younger brother Carter and I would go to like Hot Topic and like help her pick out like dresses and skirts and uh Carter was still pretty young at the time and he he would be asked by like these uh these employees at like Hot Topic and they were like what do you think of this you know and Carter literally looked at them and he was like it's literally no different. <laughs> They're just wearing <laughs> dresses now. <laughs> right. He like didn't care. And I, I was so proud of him in that moment because I was like, yes, that's exactly what that is. Like it's just there's just who they are. It's it's not any different. Like and that was before uh Beth came out too um to us. It was like she was experiencing like gender fluid, like you know, at first. Right. And, you know, eventually it became the journey of self-discovery into her realizing that she's a female. And right. it, it was it was a really nice thing to see that, like, someone younger than us was so accepting and just like, yeah, that's just who they are. That's no different than, like, how I used to know them. It's still, you know, my sibling. Like, that doesn't change anything. Right. And, like, Luke, Luke has always, Luke is my brother. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, you know that, but just just stating that. Um, and he's always been, he always has defended me to his friends. And his friends used to say, you know, they'd be playing games and they'd be playing on the Xbox or something. And they'll say, so, they'll say something on live or something like that. And he'll be like, oh, you know, don't don't say that. Um, right. Or even if I'm not around them, like they'll, he still tells them not to say it. And all of his friends don't really say anything like that anymore. Um, and then right. that also goes with the R word too. They used to say that all the time and I've always been against that. Um, and especially since I started in the career that I'm in, that has definitely made me a lot more aware of stuff like that. So he also tells him to stop saying that too. So that's good. Good. Um, so it's been... Right, right. He, because I explained to him when he doesn't understand something, I just explained it to him in like the simplest way possible. Because obviously he'll never mm-hmm. fully understand it, but I explained it to him in a way that he will understand it and he does pick it up. He, he's very open minded. He is very just, he likes to think. And so, you know, you just state something to him and he'll pick it up. So that's good. That's great. That's really great. The other thing that was really interesting in high school was I had multiple girlfriends from seventh to ninth grade. And my favorite ex, well. my favorite ex-girlfriend, Miss Amanda, um, I will, if you're listening, Miss Amanda, you know that you're my favorite ex. Um, <laughs> I always tell her that she turned me gay. Um <laughs> <laughs> 
so that's fun. Um, obviously that's that's not what happened, but you know, it's it's just an inside joke that her and I say all the time or I get memories on my Snapchat of when we were together and stuff like that. And I'll post it on my story and I'll be like, Oh my God, I can't believe I dated you. Like I'm not into that. Like just <laughs> it sounds so mean, but like she just laughs about it. Even though um. And then she, so I hope she's doing well, you know, knowing that her first boyfriend was gay. I am I hope she's doing well. <laughs> so. It's so funny that um, <laughs> I'm pan and like very attracted to women, you know, but right. I'm in a relationship slash like dynamic with three cis males. <laughs> okay. Um, um, and so there's a lot, okay. In a polyamorous relationship. Oh, okay. Okay. We can get into that too. But okay. So first we're going to talk about terminology. So a lot mm-hmm. of people, there's a lot of new terminology. and It's not just gay and lesbian anymore or transgender anymore. So mm-hmm. I, for people who don't know. So when we say cisgender, we are talking about people who are biologically male and female at birth. Usually. So like I'm a cisgender gay man because that's that's what I was born at birth and that's what I identify as. And then pansexual so then pansexual is like bisexual, right? So it's male, female and then when it's like transgender male and female, basically mm-hmm. everything on the spectrum it's, it's of basically gender. Basically everyone. Basically um, you can identify as anything, anyone and if I like you enough. Hell yeah. But it's not about cooking utensils, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, there are some pretty sexy cast iron pans out there. Like, I just... <laughs> I've heard that so many times that it's literally ridiculous. Like, you say pansexual, people think that it's like a fetish or something. Like, you're attracted to, like, it's a pan. It's my favorite joke <laughs> to use. It's my favorite thing. It's so overused, but it's still my favorite thing in the entire world. Ugh. <laughs> and see like me so relationship wise I will only date men and when I say men I'm talking about cisgender men and transgender men um, because if you know th- th- what am I going to say I'm super gay you know this whole exactly. super straight yeah. bullshit like no like <laughs> trans men are real men trans women are real women so period and i don't want to hear it any other way so if you identify as a man you know that there's an there's an option like Mm -hmm. to me that's an option i don't care if you haven't transitioned or whatever if you identify as a man i will date you but i don't date people because i don't like dating (laughs) so You know what's so funny? Something that I that I came to the conclusion the other day with uh, my bisexual friend is uh, we we love women, right? We love them, but he is like, I will only date men because women scare me. And I was like, <laughs> wow, if that isn't a mood, <laughs> holy Hannah! Oh yeah. my God. Uh, yeah (laughs) women scare me they're so attractive and they're so nice and I just feel like I'm like so awkward around them that I'm just like (laughs) yeah I feel that you're not gonna like me I don't know (laughs) I feel that so yeah so dating wise men but if I'm like sexually I consider myself sexually pansexual but romantically only men right it's kind of what I kind of what mine is um and i know people get really confused at that they're like oh so you'll be with a woman but like you won't date one and i'm like i just can't i really just i can't like for me it's more about the mind like if i'm dating someone it's more about the mind than it is what they are physically Mm -hmm. because men think differently than women and that's just science so Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) because And, like, because I think too much like a woman to date a woman. So, and because I always say this as a joke, I date men because I can easily manipulate them because I'm a woman. 
Um, or because I think like a woman. <laughs> I can control them. I know I know how to get them to stop thinking. Not that they well, think also, really at all, you but know, you, were, you were still <laughs> born a man, so you do know how they think, which also yeah. benefits you. But I like literally think like a woman. Like people, you know, my friends will be like talking about something and they'll be, I, I can't even think of an like, example right now, but mm-hmm. they'll be saying something or they'll be like, do you, do you get that? And I'm like, yeah, like I know why you think the way you think because I do have mm-hmm. um, quite a bit of estrogen in my, in my blood. So I do, <laughs> I do understand what you think to an extent. So that's, that's a fun fun journey because I can manipulate men and get them to do what I want them to do. <laughs> so bad. It, is so, it sounds so bad. That sounds so bad. <laughs> I can manipulate men. Yeah, gotta do the hair flip. <laughs> yeah, I can. It's easy That's and I have. I'm growing my hair only on top. I can what? and I have. It's, it's easy. Okay, there it goes again. Okay, so on the same lines of that, so why don't you tell us and me how, like, this, you know, you just recently came out. What what led you to that and what exactly do you identify as? So I identify as uh, non-binary. I do still use she, her pronouns, um, mainly because there's some part of me that does accept you know, some some days where I do feel more feminine, um, but most of the time I live in my they them space. But uh, non-binary just means that I don't associate myself with either gender um, on on the on the spectrum of things because gender is a spectrum. Um, I came to that conclusion because I honestly never fit into the mold of like female that's been deemed by our society and when I started feeling that way I made some friends on uh, discord a social media app where you can you know play your games with friends um, and I started talking to them because they also identified as non-binary and I was like holy heck it was like a lot of the stuff that they were talking about and the struggles that they went through where they just didn't feel right at all where they didn't feel like they fit into either either side of things and that's exactly how I felt it was so it felt so isolating at times where like you know girls would talk about certain things like even if they were like tomboys or even if they were like you know the girlier types I didn't fit into either one of those it was you know so that's how I came to the conclusion of that Okay, I definitely kind of, I can feel some sort of aspect of that because, you know, up until recently, within the last couple of years, I was too feminine to be with the guys, but I was too masculine to be with the girls. So not fully, Mm -hmm. not fully exactly what that is, but I can understand the aspect of not fitting into either, like fully. So I totally, I can get that. And you actually answered my first question. But (laughs) (laughs) so the other one that I have is... Is gender fluid the same as non-binary? I don't think so. I think uh, gender fluid is more, um, it's it's literally based on how you're feeling. I personally, like from what I've seen, it's more of how you're feeling that day. Do you feel more masculine or do you feel more feminine, right? Whereas non-binary, you could be a combination of both. And you could, you just, you just do your thing, you know, you just do your thing, whether that's more feminine or more masculine, but you don't feel like you need to like put it in a box necessarily. Whereas gender fluid, you can definitely feel like you want these pronouns one day, or you want these pronouns another day. Whereas like non-binary, you're just like, I don't, I don't care, but please don't use like the binary uh, pronouns on me unless I say otherwise, you know? That makes sense. And like, for me, I, you know, use the he, him, and then, you know, I, if someone calls me they, them, I'm not going to be upset about it. I really, you know, I don't care, you know, 
And then same with <laughs> if someone calls me she, I don't really care. The only people who really call me she is myself and other gay people. Like, mm-hmm. we'll be like, oh, she crazy. Things like that. <laughs> like, we'll, we use that terminology all the time. We call each other sisters, things like that. We don't not, we don't say bros in the gay mm-hmm. community. That's just not one mm-hmm. of the things that we do. Um, well, which... I, one of my friends recently came out as gender fluid, and the the easiest way to describe it was they they feel like they want to use like certain pronouns one day, whereas the, another day they'd probably feel like they'd be okay with like she her again, or you know they want he him, and it's it's honestly just based on their headspace, in, right. in all honesty. And since gender is a spectrum, it just slides. Right, which makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. People, I was, so I know I have a lot of friends that were, they, they're not, you know, things, things like non-binary, it's not necessarily like a new thing, but it is kind of a new thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard for people to understand how to use they, them, there in a sentence when referring to an individual mm-hmm. person, when they feel mm-hmm. like they, them is considered plural in the sense of mm-hmm. grammar. So I know when I first heard about it, like I kind of felt the same way. Like I was like, I don't really understand it, but I, you know, will use the they, them pronouns and I'll respect it because, you know, you just like someone who's transgender, I will never know how someone who is transgender feels, but you can still, you, you call them by whatever pronouns they want and whatever name that they want. You don't, you know, and then if you, it's different if you accidentally dead name that dead name them or misgender them than if you're like doing it maliciously right um sentence structuring is not super hard if you're like if you really try to think about it so it honestly um being non-binary and using they them pronouns and having people use them it's honestly made people and myself even stop and think before I type something out, before I say something, because it gives me time to actually think about what I want to say to this person. So for example, if I'm talking about a friend, we'll call them Sarah. Uh, Sarah identifies as they, them. So if I'm talking about Sarah, I would say, oh, they want to do this today, or hey, they want to get this for lunch. It, it just, instead of saying she wants this today or she wants this for lunch, it's, it's, it's really not hard once you really think about it. Um, it's hard for me to think of like more complex sentences on the fly, but it, it just takes a lot of filtering and a lot of right. taking time to, to really think about what you're going to say next. Right. Um, and that was something uh, when I was first exploring that side uh, was something that I definitely caught myself doing a lot is I took the time to stop and think before I, you know, used their pronouns. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right. So on that note, we are going to take a break real quick and we will be right back. All right, guys. Welcome back. So the second segment that we just decided to talk about was YouTube scandals and within the beauty community and just YouTube scandals in general. And I know a lot about this because I used to be a huge follower of people involved in these scandals. So I don't even know where to start um, with this. So do we just want to start kind of from the beginning and just do a little like we, can, we don't have to talk about full, full story, but just like in general. No, I just thought it was funny. I thought of it because I looked at my makeup palettes that are used uh, for my <laughs> makeup today. And I've got Jeffree Star. We've got Jacqueline Hill. We've got James Charles. <laughs> got, I've got the conspiracy pa- like palette at another house. Like, oh my God. I thought it was so funny because I was looking at my palettes and I was like, I need to get new ones because all of these people have been canceled or are done for, or <laughs> they're trying to save their career. Right. Um, 
So I was a huge fan of James Charles back after I graduated when he was starting to get really, really big at the time. And me and my friend Madison had gone and met him at the Mall of America in November of 2018. And I remember this. It was a lovely experience. It was a fun experience. Like it was definitely interesting. Like would definitely do it again. Not not him, but an experience right. like that again for sure. I remember seeing his tweets when he was in Minnesota and he's like, Oh my god, it's so cold. Just like Um yeah, yeah. think about having to wait outside <laughs> for six hours at in the middle exactly. of the Exactly. He's waiting. <laughs> He's waiting in his hotel room going, oh my god, it's so cold here. Hello? You had to wait 15 hours to meet him. Yep. Like, we were waiting, and then we got our picture, and it was like, we waited 15 hours for like a minute. And in there, there's a video I posted on Instagram on my on my Finsta when that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I posted the video of me meeting him because they had a screen playing on the other side of Morphe with people mm-hmm. who were meeting him. And you can see in the video, so I give him a hug. We had a little chat. He said my makeup was cute, even though it was literally the most disgusting thing. Like maybe my, I think it was my second time doing it myself. It was absolutely okay. atrocious. And he was like, oh, I like it. Did you do your eyeshadow yourself? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know. But, and then in the video, you can see that I had walked away and he tried to give me a hug, like when I was leaving and I didn't give him a hug. And I was like, I watched that back and I was like, oh shit, everyone else was giving him a hug at the beginning and at the end. <laughs> and I will have to find this video and post it on the podcast page so you guys know what I'm talking about. But this... <laughs> It was very awkward, um, and I was literally, like, shitting my pants, like, waiting to meet him because I was so freaking anxious, um, and then, so then, you know, a few months later, not a few, like, six months later, all this stuff happened with Tati and James, and, which we oh, now know, so now we know dramatic. that um, Jeffrey and Shane were gaslighting Tati, so... There's just a lot of a lot of stuff that I feel like we as the general public don't know, and we may never know. But you know, it is what it is. They, you know, Shane. I don't think will ever have a career on the internet again. No. Which I was I, really um, into Shane when I was younger. Yeah, I I don't know like everything. I feel like he might be going down the Oni right now. I don't know if you know who that is. Going down what? Just the Onision route. Onision. I could go on for hours. Oh my god. Uh, he. Uh, he's been accused of many things. A, most if not all of them are true and it's it's whack uh, a lot of people hate him a lot of people can't stand him I'm one of those people um, it feels like Shane might be going down that route where he just pretends like everything is fine I don't think he'll go as far into as bad as Onision, where he like messages people that he used to talk to, uh, or <laughs> send them like several emails a day. Right. And be like, used to talk. Nah, I don't think Shan's gonna go down. Shan's gonna go into like a closed hole kind of thing. Yeah. Still create content, but like for a very selective group of audience, and that's it. I think that's all that's gonna happen. And I don't think he's gonna be. I think he might be a little bitter about what's going to happen. Ultimately, he had to have seen this coming. Like, there's no way you couldn't have seen this coming, like, at all. Right. And, like, I kind of look back because if you look at TV shows and movies, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, back when Shane was starting to get popular, and, you know, they're making similar jokes to what Shane was doing. And to an extent, it's like, yes, they are wrong. But 
that was also the time. You know, at the time, those kind of jokes were okay. And things like that. And it's like, if someone apologizes for something that they said 10 years ago, or did 10 years ago, it's like, you know, people... It's different if you constantly are acting like that. But, you know, at the time, those are the kind of jokes that were funny. And those are the kind of jokes that everyone was making until it became that it's not okay. They weren't ever okay, yeah. but it was acceptable at the time. Right. It was part of the norm. It was part of the culture. It wasn't... Right. Um, it, it part of you, those creators that made them, like, uncomfortable, too. Like, it just... But it was just time. It was something that got them views, got them clicks. It made them money. Mm-hmm. And as shitty as it is, it's their job to make money. It's their job to create content for people to consume exactly so it it would even if it went against their morals which you know when you're when you're uh when you're going for money right and that's you know part of your job is to make content on the internet to entertain people if your content isn't entertaining enough people aren't going to watch it which means you won't get money so you have to create things even if they're against your morals against right. your beliefs or something that's a little distasteful it's 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 bound to happen no matter the time period right which makes sense um like I all mean, of those prank videos with the dope situation oh god see that was I, part of the time youtube is really not something that i watch on a regular anymore um i used no. to for years it was like i had you know, maybe 12 people that I was watching that I knew when they were going to upload and I was ready to watch it as soon as they uploaded it. And now it's like, I watch, I think, one person on YouTube on a regular. And that's yeah. Colleen Ballinger. Because I love, I love her vlogs. I love her kid. I, love her husband, her, so her husband is my husband. Um, and <laughs> we just you know I love her so much and I absolutely yes. adore it yes like it she is so wholesome and such I feel like a good person <laughs> and it just she creates content that is funny that it's you know adults can watch it and like it younger kids can watch it and like it it just and then everything that she does with her son just makes me laugh all the time yeah. I'm just laughing all the time. Which her kid is so adorable. With with movies and TV shows, it's very rare that I laugh out loud. I'll watch something and I'll be like, oh, that's funny. Like I'll tell someone, oh, this is a funny movie, and then I'm watching it with them and I'm like, I'm not laughing. They're not laughing. So it's like it and then it's awkward. And I'm like, okay, well maybe it's not that funny. But like there's very select things that have made mm-hmm. me like legit laugh out loud. And things like I love Eliza Schussinger. Um, she's a com- a stand up comedian. She makes me laugh out loud all the time. And then I'll like I'll be on my car in my car on my way to work listening to her podcast, and she says something, and I'm sitting in my car like a crazy person laughing at seven o'clock in the morning on my way to work. Like it just. You know, I used to jam out to music on my way to work, and then I really got into listening to different podcasts, so I don't really do that anymore, but Colleen and Eric's podcast is pretty funny, too. I love the conversations they have on there. um, The the content creators that I watch on the regular are, um, they range from Good Mythical Morning and the Try Guys to uh, Jack Septicai and Corpse Husband and Markiplier when they play Among Us. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I genuinely just adore watching them play games together or just even, like, videos on their own. I Like, uh, the other night I was watching um, Jack Septicai reacting to, like, Irish, like, 80s, like, sex education videos. Like, really old, terrible sex ed videos. And I just could not stop laughing I was like my friend and I we were trying to eat and we put it because we couldn't stop laughing at the video oh god it was great 
Yeah, like, oh, and then I also, I watch, like, I do watch reaction videos. I always forget about those. But when new, mostly when new music comes out or when someone does a live performance, they react to it. Um, so there's, I think, three or four people I watch doing that. And then I always listen to the album myself first and pick my favorites. And then I watch mm -hmm. them and they all have different favorites. Obviously, everyone has different perceptions of things. So they all have their mm -hmm. own favorites off of certain things. But I love watching their reactions to it because it like, because like a lot of my friends, for example, I am obsessed in love with idolize Taylor Swift and <laughs> a lot of my friends don't Valid. a lot of my friends don't and I you know when I watch their videos and they're reacting they're like oh my god this bitch is amazing da, 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 da. it's like it, it makes me feel validated <laughs> even though I have no these people have no clue who I am mm -hmm. but it makes me feel validated that they also feel the same way that I do because I literally that idolize her like she is my Jesus and when Ariana said God is a woman she was not lying <laughs> so that is is it Taylor Swift oh for sure <laughs> actually f side note Ariana said that she wrote God is a woman about Lady Gaga <gasps> amazing and I'm like, Valid. we love women supporting women. Yeah. Love that. Really, we love that so much. <laughs> and like also seeing Taylor's um, Taylor's reaction when Beyonce won her Grammy to break the record, her reaction to that. And she's like over there, oh my God, like, hey. Like, I was like, yes, women supporting women. Like, stop tearing each other down. Like, y'all are in the game together. And the industry doesn't treat women well. So it's no. better to support each other, lift each other up rather than tear each other down. Exactly. And then, like, Billie Eilish. Oh, that's another thing. So lately, because I've been, like, you know, down in the dumps, I've been feeling stressed out and whatnot pretty much the whole month of March. So I really got into Billie Eilish. I was not a fan of Billie Eilish before just simply because it was one of those things like everyone was obsessed with her and so I was like I'm not like when it's like for example when Endgame came out everyone's like oh my god it's so good it's so good it's so good I had not seen a single Avengers movie in my entire life and I was like no it's not that good and they're like but it beat the records of Titanic in the box office and I'm like okay and like you will never be a Leo in Titanic I don't care who you are. You will never be him. So, like, I was just... You will never, never beat the... Can you paint me, like, one of your girls scene? Never. You will never beat that. And then, so, you'll never <laughs> beat the guys playing the violin while the sink is shipping. Like, the, you just never will. So... The sink is shipping? <laughs> yeah, the sink was shipping, and they're playing the violins. And I'm like... You know, we love we love someone who's got to finish the gig, got to do that encore. But yes, I was just like, yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares about Endgame. I think it's stupid. And then when quarantine first started, and Disney Plus had came out in November of 2019, mm -hmm. and I had a Disney Plus membership, mm -hmm. and so I was just like, I was like, oh, we're on quarantine. I guess I'm gonna watch one of these. So I watched, like, the first, like, whatever Avengers movie. Not, like, the solo movie. So not, like, the regular Captain Americas or the Iron Mans or the Hulks or anything like that. But, like, the first Avengers movie where they're all together. I watched the first one and I was like, oh, this is kind of good. Mm -hmm. And then I got into the mm -hmm. whole chronological order. And I got to Infinity War. And mm -hmm. I, bitch, when I tell you I was sobbing at the end of infinity war because i actually thought they were all dead like uh -huh. especially spider-man tom holland like i was like are you kidding me oh my baby like, i was like are you kidding me they just killed tom holland off in his first avengers movie like what the hell and then my baby oh and then that same day i watched endgame and i was like well where are they like they're all dead but like where are they and then at the end or towards the end when all the portals start to open i was like 
started bawling again. Like I was like, I was like, now I can see why everyone was so obsessed with this when it first came out, and it's... the the months after, obsessed. Like I was like, I am literally obsessed with this too. Um, so that's that's exactly a good explanation of when things are popular, I don't like them. But then later on, so like like Billie Eilish, I was not a fan. Like I was like, mm-hmm. she's annoying, can't stand her. Like it's, I just I literally, <laughs> um, and I was like, her music is too depressing. Like I just can't listen to it. And everyone loves her, and so I'm just not going to listen to her. And you know, then it'll go away. Um, and then. You know, then then her documentary on Apple Plus came out, and I watched that, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I still hadn't listened to her music at that point, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I understand her now. I was like, I see why she writes the things she writes, and why she does the things she does, and why mm-hmm. she's considered creepy, or whatever you want to describe her as. Like, I understand now, and then I went mm-hmm. and listened to all her music, and I was like, Okay, I was like, this bitch is sickening. And now you're obsessed. And now I'm obsessed. Mm-hmm. I have both her vinyls. I went and bought both of her vinyls, and now I'm like mm-hmm. obsessed. And when the party's over is like my mm-hmm. favorite fucking song, ever. Oh yeah. Like I absolutely love it. Um, and mm-hmm. that was also me with Lana Del Rey. The same exact thing. Everyone was obsessed after Born to Die came out, and it just wasn't for me. And then now I'm I love that album. I haven't listened to Lana. Because they've heard her song, but like I never like They remind me a lot of each other just in the way they the way they vocalize. Stay. It's very, very like similar as in like the whisper singing or quiet singing. It's similar. Mm-hmm. Um but nice. I feel like Billy has more of a range than Lana does. And if Lana has a range, we just haven't seen it. We just, we just haven't seen it. <laughs> we just haven't seen it. She just doesn't care to show it. Um, she Amazing. said, "She said, fuuck y'all. I can make music and not, not have to um, sing very much. I can just sit here and whisper, mm-hmm. and y'all will. And y'all love it. Y'all love it. it up. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you um, know what? We stand. She knows her. She knows. She knows what she's good at. Right. We stand." Would I see her in concert? Probably not. No. Just because it's if I'm gonna go to a concert, I want to see a show. I don't want to see someone sitting on a on a bench singing the whole time. I want to see. I wanted someone to whisper in my ear. I would listen to ASMR videos on YouTube. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> new Lana, new Lana Del Rey single. She's going to be eating crackers while talking to a beat. <laughs> Munching on a pickle. I'm here for it. Oh my god, when you said that, you oh know what Lord. that you know what that just reminded me of when you said that? The what? where's the chapstick video? Oh my god. <laughs> I will never forget that video. <laughs> that was probably the most iconic video. <laughs> Of the generation. Did you see that when sitting on the toilet? Oh, God. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do. Okay, I have to I have to find this. Oh, here it is. Her head bob. I'll never forget. I'll never forget the head bob with that. Okay, I found uh, it. Legend. Nick. screen record that and I'm gonna post that on the Instagram. But the other one <laughs> the, the other one was the um the girl trying to sing I will always love you. Oh always love you. <laughs> and I 
Screaming for the high notes for me. <laughs> just straight up, just screaming. <laughs> well, no, I can do this. Don't. And I she can do it. <laughs> No, she wasn't screaming to hit the high note. She was screaming because she couldn't do it. So she was getting mad. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, right. That's right. She was getting so pissed off. <laughs> I can do it. No, sweetie, you can't, and it's okay. <laughs> Whitney Houston oh, was God. an icon. It's it's okay if you can't match her level. It's okay. She really was. <laughs> Oh, my dog is barking outside. So sorry if you, sorry if you hear that. She's she's a pain in the ass. Um, okay. The, the white dog. Yeah, Bella. Mm. Unfortunately. I can hear it a little, but that's all right. <laughs> okay. All she's right. A doggo. That's how that's how she operates. <laughs> okay. On that note, I'm gonna let her bark, and while she barks, we're gonna take another break. All right, welcome back, guys. So for the third and final segment, we are going to finally get to these random questions that I found through via a Google search. And so let's just pump what I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. Let's just get right in. I'm literally just all over the place. Um, That's okay. Thank you, ADD. So... Okay, so the first question is, what would you do if you found a penguin in the freezer? I'd be so confused. I'd be, what the hell kind of question is that? I love penguins, so I would be very confused as to what penguin made its way in there. But that would mean that it was a baby penguin because it could fit in the freezer, right? Yeah. Just a little baby, little little buzz ball i would i would die i'd be so happy but i would hope it's alive the penguin would be just that thriving would... in that freezer <laughs> he'd be so happy he'd be like flapping his little arms i'm back at home <laughs> don't deport me back to antarctica that would literally be me with just hoarding a baby penguin inside my freezer just to make it happy. <laughs> I get that. Um, okay. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? What kind of tree would I be? So I would be a willow tree just because <gasps> um, so willow trees are fat and depressing. So that is <laughs> me <laughs> you can also find me in graveyards too because <laughs> that's where a lot of wood trees are because they're just fat and depressing but they're also beautiful so like a lot of them are in cemeteries a lot of them are in um schwabs <laughs> Um, I would also be a willow me. tree just because that means that Taylor Swift found me because she has a song called Willow. So perfect. perfect. That means she found me and she knows what I am. Okay. <laughs> would you rather fight one horse sized duck? Oh my god, I read that wrong. Uh -huh. I saw a different word, but it is duck. Or 100 it is, it is horses. Um, I thought it was saying, would you fight one horse-sized dick? And I was like, uh, what? I mean... <laughs> that ain't no fight, honey. That's a close the door and walk away kind of thing. That's definitely a no, and then walk away from that, because that, mm -mm, that doesn't no. work. Either no for me. It's a no from me. I'd rather not die. Okay, I'd rather fight a hundred. Because you can only stretch so far. 
Well, apparently, according to TikTok, um, an adult anus can fit two raccoons inside of it. <laughs> I'm so worried for people on TikTok. <laughs> no, no one put like legit raccoons up in that, but they were like, it stretches up to but like just thick random inches, fact. and you can fit. That means that you can fit two adult sized raccoons within that 36 inches. Not that you want to, but you can. I would, yeah. I think that, hmm. I feel like the horse I don't want to fight duck. a horse sized duck. I don't oh, want no. to. You know how mean ducks can be? Oh, true. <laughs> okay, 100 duck sized horses. I feel like it'd be easier because you could just herd them. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that'd be easier. And it wouldn't hurt if they kicked you because they're like ducks tiny. Ducks are pretty small. Exactly. Well, it might hurt a little bit, but not nearly as bad as like an actual sized horse. Okay, what the fuck are these? These are random. How would you sell hot cocoa in Florida? (laughs) Like, what? You just sell it at Caribou. I would do that thing Dairy Queen does and make a frozen hot chocolate. Well, then it's not a hot chocolate. I would be like, it's a frozen hot chocolate. In reality, it's just like a chocolate shake. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um... (laughs) You're a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be and why? Oh, man. I would be the color gay. And it would just be, like, <laughs> one of those crayons that it's, like, multiple different colors. And so, like, as you're coloring, it, like, is a mix of the rainbow colors. Oh, that's so good. I was going to say, like, a mix between like a peach and like salmon like pinky color i'd be one of those i would be the white my favorite color. i'd be the white one because <laughs> you can't see it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god do you remember when we were younger and you'd be like coloring with crayons and you're like you wouldn't say mm-hmm. like there were certain colors where you wouldn't be like oh can i get the um tan color whatever you would say can I get the skin color mm-hmm. and it was always white there was no you would never say that about the black one mm-hmm. that's just that's just something weird that I just thought about um, my favorite insult was definitely when speaking of crayons my favorite insult uh, to use on people was you're about as useful as a white crayon on white paper <laughs> Oh my! Was I was always the I was always the cool kid. I had the sixty four pack of crayons that had the sharp. Oh, with the sharpener. <laughs> oh yeah. People won't know what that is now. That's just sad. That makes me so sad for them. Okay, next one is: if you were a pizza delivery person, how would you benefit from scissors? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? 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 <laughs> Just, okay, I, we're just gonna we're gonna skip that. One. Um, why is a tennis ball fuzzy? Because balls have hair on them, so they just had to make them fuzzy. I, I'm so confused by that one. I don't know. I didn't create the tennis ball, Janet. <laughs> Okay, what would you do if you were the one survivor in a plane crash? Um, depends on where we crashed. I'd try and fly the plane. Get the, hell, get the hell out of there. You you think you can fly a crashed plane, honey? That's hilarious. Or like, nah, I would try and see if any form of communication would work first. And if that doesn't work, well, guess I'm gonna join the rest of them i guess i would try and find my shoe i would try and find my shoe first yeah that's That's a a that's a Grey's anatomy um reference (laughs) christina i can't find my shoe oh i would would try and find my shoe is what i would do yeah Um, valid if you woke up and had 2,000 unread emails and could only answer 300 of them, how would you choose which ones to answer? That's just stupid. I don't know. 
That's really dumb because I delete all my emails if I have over 2,000 in there. And I did do that the other day because I had over 2,000 emails that I had to delete. See, I only respond to work emails. I don't respond to anything else. Yeah. Unless it's like a professor or something. Um, Mm -hmm. If you could have a machine that produced $100 for life, how much would you be willing to pay for it? I want. I think that's asking if you had a machine that produced a hundred hundred dollar bills for life. How much would you pay for it? Thirty cents. A penny. <laughs> a quarter. What kind of stupid question is that? <laughs> how lucky are you, and why? Um, I'm not lucky. Um, I I'm not sure if LiveCareer.com knows that, but I am not lucky. Um, I have really bad luck. I'm unlucky at the same time because I have a lot of good things going on in my life, but then there's like the traumatic things that go on in my life, and I'm just like sitting there, like, oh, this is this is bad, this is is really bad. But then like the good things come back, and I'm like, ah, that's a good thing to think about. See, the good things in my life are things that I have created into my life. It's not that I get lucky. And something good happens to me, you know? I think I just get lucky. No, I have not three me. people that want to be in a relationship with me. That's crazy. Oh, I That's have people that want to be in a relationship with me too. But I just I I just say, no, sir. I am an independent woman and I don't need <laughs> I don't need a man. Um so it says, if you could choose only one song to play every time you walked into the room for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, man. Uh, definitely, mine would be Grown Woman by Beyonce. <laughs> for sure. The only song that comes to my head, because I've only been listening to Corpse Husband lately, <laughs> is Choke Me Like You Hate Me But You Love Me. Oh, good lord. Just just that song just on repeat that's like my boss ass bitch song like when i hear that song i'm just like yeah i'm gonna fucking kill this day you know i like listened to it the other day after i did my i was like looking at myself on snapchat and like mouthing the words to it and i was like oh god yeah i look great that's me with uh rain on (laughs) me by lady gaga featuring miss ariana grand um that is (laughs) (laughs) that's that one for me um, okay, this is a really good, really, corpses voice is fun. <laughs> this is a really, really good question. Um, okay. it says, if you could get rid of any one state, what would it be and why? And my answer straight up is going to be Alabama. Um, because, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie. Sorry if any Alabamians are listening to this, but it's, you know, it has a reputation, and actually, can we just get rid of the South? Like, just all of them? <laughs> I would also get rid of Alabama because it's honestly, like, they don't, any funding that they do get, it's like, their education system is, like, literally the lowest. It's it's so many things are wrong in Alabama that we might as well just can the whole state uh, because can clearly just, nothing is working and clearly no one wants to try and fix it. Can we just get rid of Alabama and make Puerto Rico a state already? <gasps> yes. <laughs> like, just make Puerto Rico Honestly. a state. Like, if they can vote for the freaking president, why can't they just be a state? Exactly. I'll take Puerto Rico. And apparently, well, I would have said Texas, but apparently Texas is in the process of becoming its own country. So, um, uh, oh yeah. no, I'm going to have to talk to one of my partners about that. He lives in Texas. Yeah. Texas is becoming its own country. I have to be like, sir, you should probably get out of there. It is seceding from the union. Oh, <laughs> yo, speaking of Texas. This when when they had that like snowstorm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. So my partner who lives down in Texas, um, he's like he's lived in other states that have snow, so he was doing just fine. 
but like he his power went out and his heat went out so he had to go stay with his mother-in-law and um so he <laughs> he had to travel there and then her power went out and her heat went out and because like none of their homes are like properly insulated for any like cold weather period they just were so taken off like off guard and like the amount of like they just had to cancel everything they had to close mcdonald's they had to close down school they had oh, to say no. no classes because you literally can't access the internet they couldn't, you couldn't do have online <gasps> classes because the they couldn't get their mcrib out. oh my god they couldn't get their mcrib <laughs> it just came back too and they oh couldn't get god. their damn mcrib oops i <laughs> <laughs> I also had friends that they had, like, what he went to to Walmart and at the like cashier sign they were like two hour wait for to get into line because okay. it was that busy okay. plus with COVID restrictions like holy hell I know I had friends living down in uh, Texas at the time and I got a video of the roof collapsing in the dorm room. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, my response was, did you get your laptop and your vape though before it collapsed? Because that's what's important. <laughs> that's what's important in those times. <laughs> did they? Did they? <laughs> yes. Did they grab those items? Yes, that is okay, what's good. important. <laughs> Is they have their what they else? have their nicotine to deal with the stress. I just so they're good. <laughs> it's okay. And they have their laptop to do homework that they couldn't attend class for because <laughs> the power was out. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um but um it made me think about like in our state, we're so used to um, you know, the we're so used to our streets being plowed. We're so used to, um, you know, all of these things. And they, they had none of that. And where my partner was, um, he definitely didn't have any of that uh, because they don't have plows in certain cities. They only fit for like certain cities. They don't have it for every city because they don't right. need it ever right Which but i'm sense. hoping that this year they do all right so on that note i think we're going to wrap this one up those were all the questions that i had um so <laughs> i just wanted to say thank you to everyone listening and to ray for being here and <laughs> you know i already recorded an outro for this so you're going to hear that in just a second but thanks for listening all right guys i want to thank you for listening to this episode of good vibes if you want to help support my podcast you can click the link in the description box of this episode which will bring you to my podcast page on anchor podcast you can also follow me on social media at on instagram at zachary Dabmeyer and at good vibes with zach and on tiktok at Zachary Dabmeyer. I'm also on YouTube if you search Good Vibes Podcast with Zach Dabmeyer. Again, thank you for listening, and I'll catch you next time.